Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. And this morning it's my pleasure to look at a book on jurisprudence, which is not the easiest subject in the world for many people. Uh, the book title is, is very simple. It says, Understanding the Nature of Law. Now that looks a very simple statement, but the nature of law has a special jurisprudential meaning, as many students will know. Now, the subtitle of the book is a case for constructive conceptual explanation. You've got to look at every single word here because it's a difficult book, this one, without any doubt. It's been written by uh, Michael uh, Guidice. I hope I've pronounced the name correctly. I think it's Guidice or Guidice. It's part of the uh, publications from Edward Elgar Publishing Limited, and this one is in the series on the Elgar Studies in Legal Theory. The book's available as a book, an e-book, and it's also on the Elgar Online system. Now, my wife Elizabeth and I have talked about the book, and we've given it a title, A Contemporary View of the Nature of Law from the Constructive Conceptual Explanations Given, rather than a full jurisprudential analysis. Let's have a look at the book first of all. It's a hardback book, you can see there. Then there's the spine and then there's the back of the book there with a bit of information. It's a light book, it runs to something like 250 pages at the most. There's a short index at the back. And then the book itself, <coughs> there's the actual front. That shows you what the actual Elgar Studies in Law Theory uh, series is about. And that's the front of the book there. Then you've got the various um, chapter headings. There aren't that many chapters in this book. Uh, there are nine in total with a conclusion. Do read the preface because he introduces you straight away to Professor Hart and his views from the concept of law. In their acknowledgements, um, a lot of people, all the usual suspects are here, Joseph Raz is mentioned, and a lot of Dworkin and a whole range of other people, many of whom will be well known to anybody who deals with jurisprudence. And he says in the introduction, anyone interested in the question, what is the nature of law, soon finds a vast array of answers, each embodying a particular set of concerns and methodological commitments, and each proclaiming its own special importance. And that's really where we're going to go straight into Joseph Raz. Now, after the introduction, you've then got the actual chapters themselves, which I'll mention in some detail. You can see analytical jurisprudence and its discontents. And as I say, just running through, you can see uh, there is a little bit of subheading and, and a lot of footnoting. I think the easiest way of dealing with this is to <coughs> read the book through without looking at the footnotes, try to read it through. It's written in quite a high style. It's not the easiest book to read at all. And I'll explain one of the reasons why. What I'm going to do with this review, because I talk jurisprudence and I'm well aware of what people's views are of it, um, the fact is that this book, I think, will be of some help. And this is what we say. Many law undergraduates cordially detest jurisprudence and legal theory, which is why the subject and the study of Hart's The Concept of Law are effectively compulsory in many universities. This book will assist those students looking for a first in jurisprudence, even though the style adopted by Professor Michael Guidice will be to some a formidable exercise in developing modern theories of law at its highest philosophical level. And that's really what he's doing, just if you read the introduction and follow it through. Um, I think probably anybody who's doing jurisprudence right at the beginning of the subject will find this book impossible. I think you've got to have a reasonable understanding of the players, if I can put it that way, who's involved, who said what. The index at the back will assist you when you look at the various schools of jurisprudential thought as well, like positivism and so forth. So that's just a little tip. But if you're looking for a very high grading in jurisprudence, this book will help you immensely, I think. What we have then with the book entitled simply Understanding the Nature of Law, is an immediate exploration of the higher echelons of jurisprudence. Now those are my, my words based on what I've read of the book. Uh, I did find it interesting, but there again I love the subject. Now in nine chapters and a conclusion, it explores methodological uh, questions about how best to explain law. 
and there are three parts to it, beyond conceptual analysis, illustrations and continuity in legal theory. And amongst the questions posed, one theme is the central theme, and that is this. Is there something about law which determines how it should be theorised? The theme is then developed. What Guidis has done is to give us the problem, and then he offered uh, us several methods which suggest themselves as suitable to an understanding of law. But each of the methods suggests a unique importance with no need for reference to others. That's quite clean, isn't it, that one? A solution then is offered in two key claims. They are, first, that many conceptual theories of law are best understood not as a result of conceptual analysis, but as constructive conceptual explanations. And those three words are an important block uh, description, which emphasise a crucial role for revision and expansion of ordinary concepts in ways responsive to new problems and new phenomena. And the second, then, is that conceptual theories of law can and ought to identify what are termed necessary as well as contingent features in the construction of conceptual explanations of law. Um, Elgar, the publishers, call this work a novel book, and it certainly is because it explains the importance of conceptual explanation by situating its methods and goals in relation to, rather than in competition with, issues such as social, scientific and moral theories of law, which is probably its greatest contribution to modern jurisprudential theories for the legal scholar to understand and develop further today. As the main commentators have said, we agree that this work will be of primary interest to both students and academics in legal, political and moral philosophy. And it will also be of great assistance, I think, to students and scholars working in the social sciences who are interested in questions about the distinctive character of law within the philosophy of legal theory itself. Um, Edward Elgar Publishing, of course, well known to many people, have clearly taken over an important jurisprudential mantle here as one of the leading legal publishing houses. And they produce high quality research materials for the top end of academic endeavours, whether it be by way of producing edited theses and bringing together an array of glittering expert commentators in a particular field to give us all a bit of uh, individual enlightenment on the more difficult and esoteric bits of the philosophy of law. That's what we've got here. And it just might make matters a bit easier for the students, I feel, if you follow um, in this hated branch of, <laughs> of what we have to study in the core subjects. Um, if you actually take a good look, a dispassionate look at the book, um, you'll probably only like it if you are a political anorak um, like I am, until you actually understand that what Michael uh, Guidais has done is exposed the intellectual camouflage. And well done to him for that. As I've said, teaching the subject is difficult. The audience get bored very quickly. But this, I think, is a useful book. I'll just show you it again. It's a hardback, as I've said. Um, you can see that. There's the back of it. Just opening it in the middle. Conceptual Explanation and Contingency. You'll see there all of the basic principles which come together in jurisprudence are actually in this book and discussed. You'll see from the very limited um, index at the back that you've got all of the names of the leading players and you've got a lot of the basic um, information that's available. And you also have, of course, a useful uh, bibliography. Heart features very prominently, but all, of, all the main people are there. Just going through it, you can see all of the main uh, people, the main... Uh, commentators in the whole area, including Jay Bentham, right at the beginning. There it is. I think it's a good book, and I'm sure, as I've said before, if you're looking to get a high mark in this area, this is a book for you. Thank you very much, anyway, to all concerned for an excellent contribution, which is a modern contribution. Remember one thing, jurisprudence is a much less um, immediate subject in that there's a lot of learning spread over a long period of time. So it's nice to have a new book with new refreshing views. So thank you. Bye bye.